And ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Two Schmo Show. This week, we've got really just a lot of Marvel bullshit. Because I really don't want to talk about the Kyle Rittenhouse trial until it goes to mistrial. Yep. There's more than enough Marvel to fill time. Yeah. <laughs> Ironically, we're probably going to be more on focus about the trial than the actual judge by ignoring <laughs> it. Yeah. Oh, man. What a mess. I feel um, like, okay, it, just a little <sighs> uh, about the trial, my thoughts. If you want to go into it, but... I just I kind of don't. <laughs> Let's just I'm fine just doing it like a little bit. Like, like it's a mess. It, it just seems like such a mess that yeah. I don't know. Just uh, stepping away from that. I just feel bad. Like I'm yeah yeah. Li- literally every time I read it, I feel unclean. Hmm. But uh, yeah, we had Disney Plus Day happen, ladies and gentlemen, and this is probably going to be uh, something to appease our Disney overlords. Disney, give us money, please. Wink, wink. Uh, I I didn't even know this was a thing. You didn't know Disney Plus Day? No, it's such a corporate pandering made up holiday. <laughs> the third headline that I see here is Disney Plus Day was an unadulterated disaster. Yo, I feel that. Thank you. Whoever wrote oh, yeah, because most of the stuff already leaked. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Oh, they had stuff behind paywalls? No. Really? Like what? So some of this stuff was exclusively released on Disney+, Plus. so unless you already had Disney+, Plus, you couldn't see it. Oh, my gosh. Like the announcements themselves? Yeah, apparently the footage of the <laughs> Obi-Wan Kenobi whatever and first looks at the upcoming Marvel shows were only available on Disney+. Plus. So they probably announced them and were just like, hey, if you want to actually see what we're doing, give us money. That's terrible. They deserve to be leaked at that point. <laughs> this move was made in response to the drastically slow increase in subscriber numbers, a mere 2 million in one quarter. Damn, only 2 million, man? Only two million. When you're literally leveraging some of the most watched TV programming on your platform, mm-hmm. I think they're really just trying to fight the piracy that, that those shows experienced. Um, so where do we even begin with all this nonsense? I think I want to start with some of the non-Marvel stuff. Go ahead, I'm because I'm because most of this seems really bland. As a Zoomer myself, I am excited for the Obi Wan show. Only for my prequels love. Yes, I agree. Yeah. Uh, a lot of the stuff is just things that we would have already expected them to do. And I guess some of it, like a lot of this is um, stuff we already knew about. Yes. Stuff that's already been announced or behind the scenes. So we have Shang-Chi, Jungle Cruise being available on Disney+, Plus, which, yeah, of course they were. Yeah. Apparently there's a Home Alone movie. That'll be available on Disney Plus. Home sweet home alone. Yeah. I I'm want sure to shoot be... it. Let's let's uh search Google for this. I'm not a violent person, ladies and gentlemen, but that movie's trailer made me angry. <laughs> made me want to cast great. Ah Yeah, just looking at the poster, it's already a problem. Yeah. Like Hi there, millennials. Part... You remember part of <laughs> Go on. I just feel like part of the part part of the way that Home Alone works is that it's not overly elaborate. It's very easy to imagine yourself in that kind of a situation, and that's why it worked. You don't have people casually making pool ball compressed air guns. I like to think uh, the kid from Home Alone grew up to be Jigsaw. Uh, fun fact: <laughs> I've never seen Home Alone. Really? Never. It's never interested in me. The, uh, I, I think it's face fair to say the first two are good in their own right. Mm. And from, I haven't seen any of them after that, but from what I've heard, they're more or less not great. One of them I thought was, I've heard was good, but the first two were thoroughly entertaining, just sort of generic holiday movies. That's kind of why I see Home Alone as kind of just generic. There's like a... Mm. Yeah. There's a whole subset of Hollywood movies that I know are classics and everybody loves them, but I refuse to watch because they just look a little too generic to me. And I realized I was not there at the time. So it's yep. very hard for me to like go and see this through the eyes of someone who probably saw it like 
totally fresh and see see it for how revolutionary it is to them where I'm just an jaded adult who missed their opportunity to actually get in on this. Yep. And they're full of references to 80s and 90s uh, pop culture that just aren't relevant anymore. Yeah. I wasn't around for that. Like, I saw hints of the past. Don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was enough that even if you didn't know exactly what they were doing at the time, you could get the understanding from the people you were with that did to know whether or not, like, a joke was funny or not. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you don't always have to get the reference to be like, oh, okay, that was a good reference. Because... People who have seen the reference and get it can, you know, sort of infer in their body language whether or not it's good. I worry that Shrek is going to be our generation's Home Alone. Oh, it already is. Okay, cool. The animation alone uh, makes it so dated that I don't think it would ever hold up to a different generation scrutiny. You... Just because it is so badly animated by I... modern standards. I think, okay, this could be my nostalgia coming up here. There's only one scene I would say is terrible in the original Shrek. It's the one where they're in the sunflower field, and you have that blue agonizing sky with no detail <laughs> in the background, and it literally looks like they're just in a beginner's like animation program. Yeah. Well, in in terms of like storytelling, it absolutely holds up, and it doesn't right. get nearly as bad as like the. Uh, um. Oh shit! I just watched it the other day because you know, as nostalgia, but some of the other 3d animated movies, but it was literally just the physical limitations of 3d digital animation at the time is that you can only do so much. Yeah. You know, I think, okay. When, when I look back at the original Shrek, I definitely have a very fondness for like Shrek and donkeys perspective. Cause they, they're meant to look good in 3d, but once you actually yep. look at like the humans and how they didn't go full cartoony with their look, that's where it starts cracking yep. apart as well. Oh, I'll also say that I think a big problem with it is that it was made to be watched in like three ways because it's early 2000s. Yeah. You have theaters. Yep. You have VHS and starting to get DVD and TV. And for VHS and DVD, the type of compression that they use on those is much more forgiving than the types of digital compression we have now. And it does make it look a lot worse if you're watching it streamed on like Netflix or YouTube. Yeah. I would definitely say it does not hold up with HD. Because then yep. you start noticing texture problems. Yep. When you're watching it on a CRT where you can't physically see those textures because the detail's just not there, it's a lot more enjoyable because you just don't notice them. Yeah, totally. I, I get that. Yep. How great is it that it's Disney Plus Day we're talking about and we just go to Shrek, which is the <laughs> movie that is supposed to say fuck you to Disney? Hey, it was effective. Yeah, you, you know. know? DreamWorks gen generation. That's all I'll say. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, back to Disney Plus. There's mm -hmm. a whole bunch of like behind the scenes stuff. Uh, collection of fan favorite shorts from Walt Disney Animation. That's actually going to be pretty cool. It'll be nice to have those easily available on Disney Plus because there is quite a few of those that are very entertaining just in the small nature of them. Have I ever told you my conspiracy theory with Disney Plus? Hmm. And I, this only comes up because of the animated short stuff. Um, yeah. You ever notice how Mickey is not really used that much in the advertising of Disney Plus? Uh, so, yes. But I, I also think that that's a very conscious decision on Disney's part. Yeah, I, I think it is, too. Because Mickey's coming up there in copyright. And I think they don't know how they're going to get him back from copyrights. Mm -hmm. Like, public domain clenches. And well, and they want to make it clear that because when a lot of people think disney it's the same way uh for people of like our parents generation when i think like cartoon network they think it's a thing for kids very and disney's fair. trying to break away from that and Adult make it. sure that it's not just their animation Good particularly point. bringing in star wars and marvel fair enough but yeah the copyright stuff is also problematic Anyway, that was always my big conspiracy is how Mickey is never shown anymore today. And I've always felt that they've been trying to go more more corporate almost in a way with like it's just a banner to hold all these other brands now rather than being its own brand. Mm hmm. Yeah. Elsa is featured more than Mickey Mouse nowadays sometimes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it makes sense. You know, that's the, the toys that the kids want. Hell yeah, man. Get me a fucking Elsa doll before a Mickey Mouse rag puppet. <laughs> Fuck Mickey. Elsa for life. Mm -hmm. 
So what else did we get? We have Chow Alberto, which is apparently some way related to Luca, I yes. guess. It's a little like sequel short. Yeah. Which I think it's adorable. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, it looks like just a nice piece of animation. Luca is a very nice movie. I mm-hmm. highly recommend it. Yep. Uh, back with the behind the scenes, we have Under the Helmet, The Legacy of Boba Fett, The Making of Happier Ever After, A Love Letter to L.A., Marvel Assembled, The Making of Shang-Chi and Legend of the Ten Rings, and then there's some other stuff. Most of the other stuff doesn't really seem that interesting. I mean, like, it's co- sequels to seasons of things. There's apparently a Simpsons thing. Oh, yeah, because that was kind of a big thing is that, like, I guess all of The Simpsons is on Disney Plus now. It already wasn't. I don't think it was at launch. Damn. Or maybe it wasn't like in its entirety, but it is now, I think. Or like recently it was. Wow. Okay. I, to be fair, I only watch like the first 10 seasons when I'm on Disney Plus. Because mm-hmm. that's all my girlfriend will let me do. So. <laughs> but they're doing some The Simpsons in Plus Aversary. Oh, um, God. I'm not a Simpsons guy, so I don't know what that means. You don't like The Simpsons? No, I don't dislike it. I just don't really ever. I've never really gotten into it. Do I like, you know, I it's the kind of thing where I, it's got a bunch of people who work on it that I know I like their other stuff. Yeah. But I've just never put in the time. I will say this, right? If you're ever bored and you need something to watch, first eight seasons with the original writing staff, mm-hmm. totally yep. worth your time. Absolutely holds up perfectly fine. Um, I, That's all I'll say. Mm hmm. Apparently, they put in the effort in this to announce that they were putting Enchanted on Disney Plus. Yeah, my girlfriend freaked out. Really? She likes Why? that movie. I don't know. I mean, it's not a bad movie. It just doesn't seem like announcement worthy. I know. It's like it's one it's of those totally mo- fine, but I just feel like yeah. if you weren't a kid back when that movie came out, no one would care about that movie coming on to Disney Plus. Hmm. In fact, I'm very tempted to just call my like my little brother up. I'm like, hey, do you know what an Enchanted is? He's like fucking. Yeah, thir- he's thir- twelve. He he don't he don't know. No. What is Spin Disney? Spin is a Disney Channel original movie starring Aventika Vandanapu. First teaser played during the season finale of Secrets of... What? So it already premiered on Disney. So this is a TV show. Yeah. No, this is an original Disney movie that's now going... Yeah, that's just kind of boring. Unless you already know about it, I don't know why you would care. Yeah. I don't understand why Disney's still doing those made-for-TV movies. Well, they are cheap. And in this case, I bet would not be surprised if they are very intentionally trying to reach out to uh, other audiences in different cultures than us and europe you know what i can respect that actually so yep. yeah because i was noticing one of these other ones i just look, looked it up uh entre mm-hmm. is the spanish language name of it it's a tv series called intertwined in the u.s i guess but they very intentionally revealed it under the spanish name good so, oh, speaking of Spanish, yeah. there is one piece of surprise news I have to do at the end. Oh, yeah. Once we're done with this Disney yes, bullshit, we'll have, to, have to look forward to that. Yeah. Uh, let, let's talk Marvel, though. This is what, what what we actually care about. Yeah. The, the the this is just a Marvel podcast. We just pretend to be current events. Basically, it's Marvel podcast, but we make you sad sometimes too. Yeah. We're all like, "Hey, kids, come in with the cool superheroes," and then we give you depression. <laughs> Looking at the lineup here, personally, the only one that I'm interested in is uh, X-Men 97. Yeah, so let's start with these announcements. We have, let's see, 12 shows that got announced. Well, some Mm -hmm. of these were already announced, but then they got teasers. Both put in this announcement. Yeah, so I'm going to start in a very non-traditional order because I want to go by the most mundane and then build up to the more interesting (laughs) ones. Sure. For fucking some reason, we got Secret Invasion coming, which is a scroll show. Yeah. And 
I'm not sure what to think about that because they refuse to tell us nothing but other than give a Samuel L. Jackson like in a rugged look with a beard and say, that's the show. And Ben Mendelsohn, I know them. Who is that? Ben Mendelsohn, I know that name. Oh, so, so he plays the scroll guy in Captain Marvel. Oh, okay, so Talos. Yeah. Yeah. Like, honestly, I hope this is just Nick Fury and Talos doing a buddy cop in, like, Yo, the 80s. that'd be kind of cool. That'd be cool. Yeah. That'd be fun. Just, I... like, buddy cop going around trying to find the, the scroll that are hiding away. Yeah, dude, that'd be a cool show. Okay, buddy cop show like that, I can work around. Mm -hmm. I have a weak spot for buddy cop stuff. Yeah. Um. Then they have Ironheart, which... Yeah. Riri Williams is coming, ladies and gentlemen. Mm -hmm. All the frat bros who read comics or claim to read comics be damned. Um, I'm, I mean, I, I have nothing against Riri. I'm just wondering why they're doing a show on her so soon. They definitely, I think in the story-wise, they need someone to step into that Iron Man role, and this is probably the best way to do it. I mean, my big theory is that they're doing Young Adventures, in which case, yeah, bring mm -hmm. in Riri Williams. <laughs> yep, that makes sense. Yeah. Fits with the young Spider-Man that they have right now. Yeah, young Spidey. And it would give a really interesting uh, character dynamic if you have the young Spidey as he's getting older, sort of stepping into the same mentor role that Tony Stark did for him for a young you know, Ironheart. Yo, that would be slamming. I can dig that. Yeah, that'd yeah. be a good turnabout. Um, then we have I Am Groot, a show I yeah. still don't understand why it's here. I really don't get... Okay, so I do. I get why so many people like Groot. Yeah. But I really don't get why so many people like Groot that much. You know what Groot has? Groot has Minion Syndrome. Where he's Groot a, has marketability. Yeah, minion syndrome. Where yeah. he as a character can have depth, but he really relies on having other people there. And as soon as you put him in the spotlight, how are we supposed to communicate his depth to an audience without someone to build off him? It's a dibby. A dibby. Groot is a dibby. And I what I'm it's getting just a cute thing that you point at because it's cute. <laughs> um what I'm also getting at is that they're seeming to do baby Groot instead of, uh, what is he, a teenager now? Yeah. So I guess that's okay. I still think it would be so much more interesting if we got, like, pre-Guardians, Rocket and Groot. That'd be cool. Like, that that's something. Who, who gives a shit what happened to Groot in the two months between when the ends of Guardians 2 and the start, or the end of Guardians 1 and the start of Guardians 2? Like, it was such a small amount of time. I don't know what unique character development they're thinking they're going to be able to do. Other than just having it be a Minions, let's make money kind of thing. It really feels like it. Although James Gunn is doing the executive producer uh, role on this. I don't know. I strongly believe, in my opinion, that some of the worst parts of Guardian 2 were literally everything that focused on Baby Groot. Really? Because it was just, even for the silliness and the goofiness that uh, Guardians 2 had, it just seemed to unnecessarily take it to, like, another level of absurdity. My thing is, like... When I look back at Guardians 2, there's like this big black hole where Groot and Rocket's plot line is, and I don't remember. But like, I do remember like the really good ego Peter Quill shit. Did they have a plot line? I think they had a thing with Yondu, and like that's how they introduced Yondu. Oh, yeah, they did. Yeah. I only remember that because that was like obviously setting up Yondu for the father storyline. Yeah. Yeah. It worked for Yondu, but it was kind of nothing. For for Groot, at least, it was like completely nothing. Yeah. Uh, then we have Marvel Studios' What If Season 2. Yeah, not surprised. It seems like the kind of thing they can probably pump out pretty easily, and it must have done pretty well on terms of viewing. I just want them to put more quality towards the episodes, because like, that was a very mixed season. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh yeah, <laughs> please don't bring them all together to make a multiverse Avengers. Please stop. It's yeah, <laughs> better when it's an anthology. <laughs> they apparently are taking one of them and running now. Um, followed by Moon Knight, which one of the two shows I'm actually excited mm -hmm. for. 
Um, Oscar Isaac. Interesting. I actually kind of like that. Yeah. This is uh, Marvel Batman, pretty much. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself here, but uh, I recently watched Dune uh, at home on uh, HBO, and yes. Oscar Isaac has a role in Dune, and I was very impressed with his performance in that outside of Star Wars, and yeah. he did a very good job. So seeing him in more stuff like this that seems to be on the serious side is welcome because he has a lot of talent. I do get a lot of like great acting vibes from Oscar Isaac, and I'm genuinely yep. hoping he does make a great career for himself. Yeah. Because for, for Dune, when I was watching it, it was the kind of thing where he doesn't look like you expect him to look from his past roles. Yeah. And you have this kind of moment where it's just like that kind of like uncanny valley of just like, wait a minute, I know who that is. Holy shit, that's Oscar Isaac? What? He just hides so well into the character. Yeah, it just works really well. And it looks unlike anything I've seen him do in the past. So, Followed. Very, very interested. Sorry. Um, no, go ahead. Following Moon Knight. The Oscar Isaac TV show. Uh, we get Ms. Marvel. Yeah. Which a lot of comic book fans are really upset about. Because they're changing how her powers work. Yeah. Which I guess, eh, it's, you know, it's it's live action, so. Yeah. But, yeah. Seems like the only people that are willing to try stretchiness outside, like, the Fantastic Four crew is the One Piece crew at the moment. And I yeah. think I mean there, there's a reason for it. It looks kind of gross when you're doing it in live action. <laughs> I, it really depends how you use it. Yeah. I guess we'll have to see how they do it in one piece, but like pretty much everything up to now, that kind of inhuman extension and flexibility is always used, even intentionally, for its awkwardness and just grossness. Well that's like part of how the, unnatural it is. Believe it or not, that's a big part of the comedy in one piece. Oh, I'm sure it is. Yeah. But like when you're trying to play it up seriously, like Fantastic Four, yeah. it doesn't work because you're just like, oh, God, that's disgusting. What the hell? Honestly, if I had like stretching powers, I would probably make myself into a human shit post as well. So <laughs> uh, up next, um, oh, go on. Well, real quick, yeah. staying with Miss Marvel. This is like a lot of these to me feel emblematic of almost a problem i think that marvel's going to run into and that's leaning too much into these lower budget lower effort tv shows characters like ironheart miss marvel and moon knight are things i would expect them to give a movie to establish them as a character and then give them a tv show because just jumping straight into a tv show isn't what you need if you're trying to have these actually and the marvel universe Bravo, bravo. You figured out what I was going to say at the very end of this. Yeah. Um, I get the feeling instead of uh, Disney wanting to give them a budget for a movie, they want to mm-hmm. give them a movie budget to make three TV shows about three different characters for three different licensing campaign. I mean, merchandising campaigns. Yep. But and I guess they're, they're running on the idea like what they did with WandaVision, Loki and uh, Captain Falcon Winter Soldier is that you know if you throw enough shit at the wall eventually some of it's gonna stick and be good I mean yeah like one half of WandaVision well actually like three quarters of WandaVision was good mm. Loki was good and uh, mm. Captain a, a, say a quarter of Captain Captain Falcon and you know Winter Soldier was, was fine are we just gonna call him Captain Falcon in the meantime before he comes Captain America I, I don't know like what are you supposed to call him I mean He's Captain, Captain Falcon Captain America not yet not, not yet. I mean, like, I guess he is technically, but yeah. it, it's still the question of like, is any of that shit canon in the actual Marvel universe? What's he going to look like when we see him next? More than likely how they did in the show, but that's what my guess is. I, I don't know. We don't know yet. Yeah. I, I hope so. But like so much shit happened with the Loki stuff that's never going to make it into the mainstream Marvel. Excuse me. Marvel stuff. I don't know. It's the it's the question that we still have to have answered because it's still new enough. True. Um, up next, She Hulk. Yeah. Yeah. Which I'm excited this for. Looks, uh, I saw a really interesting point about uh, particularly the uh, the title is like a big miss. Why do you say so? I got to find this real quick on Twitter, but I saw someone point out like their example of how they would have expected the title to be. But it was just like, oh, yeah, that 
looks way, way better. Hmm. But I gotta see if I can find it. So you can go ahead and keep going. Yeah. Uh, oh, I, we already actually have uh, footage of it. Okay. Yeah. The thing that scares me is they gave like a little tease of how she looks as She Hulk, and it literally just looks like um, what's the name of her actress? It literally just looks like her actress in uh, body paint. Yep. Probably because it is. Yeah. Got to confirm this is the right one. Yeah. Uh, Tatina uh, Malassian. Mm -hmm. Did I pronounce that right? I'm terrible at pronunciation. Because I I have no idea. I'm sure it's close enough. Um, But apparently this is the uh, original She-Hulk logo. Yeah. I think it looks way better than what they've changed it to. Yeah. The original She-Hulk looked just like Hulk, but she. It's Tatiana Maslany, something like that. Tatiana Maslany. Okay. My apologies. Um, I mean, it, it, yeah. Yeah. It, I get that they're name. trying to go for like the law and order thing because the joke is that she's a superhero mm. lawyer. Like, yeah. <laughs> Daredevil. Um, up next. The show that's going to launch a million fucking Funko Pops, Marvel Zombies. Yeah. Yeah. Is this a spinoff of the What If thing? Well, believe it or not, the What If thing was actually based off a comic book series, like a What If comic. <laughs> and I How never... many layers can we get? <laughs> yeah. Guess who did the original uh, Marvel Zombies comic? I have no idea. I believe it was the writer of The Walking Dead. Really? Huh. Yeah. Interesting. Let's see. Yeah, Robert Kirkham. Kirkman. Interesting. Uh, f- yeah, fucking weird. I get it. Um, I'm just... Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was born in 1996. I went through the 2000 zombie craze, and I still yeah. fucking hate zombies from the oversaturation yeah. we got. I really... I just don't get the appeal of like the concept in general of just like oh what if we had blank but they were zombies like what? yeah yeah who cares who fucking cares why is that something that you think is interesting I don't get it it's not the mer- it's it's not the ideas that are interesting it's the merchandising value yeah, it seems like it yeah guarantee that's gonna show up around uh, Halloween mm, probably. Speaking of uh, Halloween, we have Agatha, House of Harkness. I gotta look into this because I don't get how that works. What Agatha? What, is there just not like a? An, I'm I'm on a web page here. Oh, there it is. Catherine Han. Because isn't she like under Wanda's spell? Control? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what they're doing. Maybe something happens to Wanda in a com- uh, coming thing, in which case that says spoilers. Come on, Disney. Yeah. What if it's just 12 episodes of just mundane bullshit in the town, <laughs> and it's just grappling with the idea of how <laughs> fucked up wa- what Wanda did was? <laughs> I like it. I really like that. Um, I just... I, n- nothing yeah. against Catherine Hahn, but I just didn't think Agatha oh, was yeah, a character absolutely. needing her own show. Yep. I was about to say the same thing. Catherine Hahn, great actress. Yeah. But, like, it's a minor character in a side story of the Marvel Universe. We don't need a TV show for it. No. you can't. Like, Unless they're co- going to pull something crazy out here, which I'll be surprised if they do. I don't get it. Yeah. Wait, what, what is she supposed to do? What is her motivation? What is she going to do? Nothing. She's going to just do witchy stuff. I feel like that was made on committee by some execs that just happened to like the idea of WandaVision season two. Yep. Which is just make WandaVision season two. Yeah. That that seems like then maybe that's what this is. And this is just how they lead into it. I don't know. But who knows? I don't feel like this is the right way to brand it to lead into that. Like no. you want to ride on the name recognition of WandaVision because it did so well. So, Kyrell, I have a question for you for this next one. Yeah. What was the best part of Spider-Man Homecoming? Best part of Spider-Man Homecoming? Uh, the dynamic between Spider-Man and the villain. 
Okay. Um, you know what my favorite part of Spider-Man Homecoming was? What's that? How they respected the audience enough to know what a fucking Spider-Man is to not do an origin story in that movie. With just like <laughs> the, the side conversation with him and Ned being like, the spider's dead, Ned. It's not coming back. Yeah. So why the fuck do we have a Spider-Man prequel series coming aboard to Disney Plus? It's really weird, isn't it? Spider-Man freshman year. Like, on so many levels. Because it's animated. Yeah. It's not even, like, you don't even get the face. I mean, I, no, I'm sure they're going to use his likeness. But, like, it, you don't even get that quick face recognition of, like, oh, yeah, it, it's the Spider-Man. Yeah. What? And, tonally, it's really different from where the MCU is right now. Yeah. Like, we are in post-blip. Everybody's depressed. Mm. And we're going to go back to pre-blip. Where everybody was like, hell yeah, we got Avengers. We can do whatever we want. And the public in general kind of thinks Spider-Man's just a murderer. Yeah. Like, I'm just looking at this and I, knowing what we know about the MCU, right? Peter didn't have the original Spider-Man suit in the beginning of the MCU. He had to make a homemade yeah. one. So we're not getting the, home, we're not getting mm. the classic iconic Spider-Man look. Yeah, and his homemade suit looked like shit. Yeah. It looked bad. Like, that was part of the joke. Yeah. Yeah. It was meant to look bad. That's why in Homecoming, when he wears it, despite knowing it's a bad-looking suit and he's going to get fucking killed by the vulture, that's, like, part of the reason why we root for him. Yeah. Yeah. He's the underdog. He's the underdog in that situation. So, how are we going to make a Spider-Man series where he's just wearing this dinky little suit? Are we going to, like... Because I'm assuming we're not going to do any of the big Spider-Man villains in this uh, series because how can you do an actual supervillain versus dinky little suit Spider-Man? I'd assume not. Yeah. Because like the whole point of Vulture was that was like his first time taking a supervillain on and he was terribly outclassed because he didn't know what the hell he was doing. I also don't really get the title because wasn't he supposed to be like in high school? He was in high school. Maybe that's just like a different or regional thing where... You know, ninth graders in high school are still called freshmen or something. But, like, I went to a small school. We didn't have enough people to dev- self-divide ourselves that much. <laughs> I was always it told... seems weird. Your first year, ninth grade, was freshman year. Okay. Sophomore year, 10th grade. Junior, okay. senior. And I know homecoming is supposed to be, uh, is supposed to be a sophomore year. Okay. So... Sure. The great execs at Disney had to fill in that fucking freshman year with tons of story potential. Yeah, I guess. And it's going to be a little annoying that he's got to do the whole secret covering thing with characters we know who are going to find out. Yeah. Hopefully it's like just like they just like have Ned know right off the bat. Mm. Because I don't think they could have him not know with the way the character is. Well, that's the thing. Ned found out in Homecoming. So I guess he did, didn't he? Yeah, because he like was hanging out in <sighs> Peter's room when Peter swung in, and he's like, holy shit, you're the Spider-Man. Yeah. That Lego Death Star broke for that reason. <laughs> the most important development in the MCU. Ned destroying the Death Star. Um, okay. My little Spider-Man rant over. Yes. <laughs> Up next is Echo, which... Yeah. Brought it, to you by Amazon. Yeah. Everything I know about this show from leaks, I'm super excited for because... Oh, uh, okay. So this is following Hawkeye. Yeah. I'm fine with that. Um, Echo is also rumored to have like uh, the first Daredevil comeback post mm-hmm. uh, No Way Home if the leaks are true. So yep. if we can get like more Daredevil, I'm cool with that. I'll say it seems weird to have a uh, Marvel's Hawkeye sequel basically confirmed before a Loki sequel. Um, but I I think that the Hawkeye show looks solid and has a strong foundation. So I, you know this this is a, it's an interesting idea. I think they could do well with it. Have you heard about the Hawkeye um, show's controversy with uh, pretty much taking the comics 
uh, for the marketing material and not crediting the original artist? No, I haven't. Well, that's a thing. Huh. Yeah. Yeah, that's... Oh, excuse me. Not good, but... uh. I don't know. I, I I still think, you know, controversy aside, it looks decent still. Yeah. Um, up next, last one, the one that you already mentioned. Uh, they are Yeah, it's the only one I'm interested in, honestly. <laughs> they're bringing back X-Men 97. It's a reboot. So is Is this the first X-Men branded Disney collaboration under the Marvel banner? Yes. Because everything up to this has been, what, Fox or Sony? Fox. Yeah. It's so, like, that's kind of big. Yeah. This is the first time they're acknowledging the X-Men in over, like, how many years? Ever? When When was, uh, yeah. It, that's actually, it's one of those things that it feels like it's been a long time, but the last X-Men movie wasn't that long ago. No, but it wasn't exactly that memorable. Dark Phoenix, oh God, Dark Phoenix was 2019. Yeah. There was New Mutants as well, but that was technically released under Disney because of the Fox buyout. <laughs> That's true. It also kind of sucked. Did you see how they uh, announced X-Men 97? No, I haven't. You know that meme of Wolverine in bed holding the photo frame? <laughs> okay, I did see that. I didn't realize that was the official announcement. That's the official announcement. <laughs> All right, I like it. Yeah. That's fun. Oh, 2023? Ugh. I know, it's going to take a while. I heard the original cast is coming back, though. That's cool. I'm yeah. fine with that. If they can keep, like, the the that original X-Men animation vibe, I'm all for it. That's fun. Yeah. And I appreciate how they're not just trying to spearhead them into the MCU, and they're like, nah, let's just, you know, bring back the old cartoon for, as filler until we get them in there. Yeah. I mean, because it is going to be hard to get them into the MCU at this point. It'd be kind of awkward. You have to, they have to do the Eternals thing of how do you explain where the fuck they were for the last 10 years? Yeah, it's going to be very hard. I think, like, with the rumors we've heard from uh, Multiverse of Madness, where they're kind of acknowledging mm -hmm. the Fox universe as its own thing. Yep. Good way of doing it. Yeah, it is actually a pretty clever way of just like, oh, yeah, multiverse, these things exist. Yeah. Whoops. Maybe there's some in our universe. We don't know. Yeah. Yeah. And with that, we've covered all fucking 12 of these shows. And I am personally very upset that they just gave us logos for most of these and told us it's all good, fam. Yeah. How am I supposed to feel hyped over logos of shows I don't even know? Because, like... Well, no, see, you just, you gotta give, you have to give Disney your hard-earned money, and then you get your previews, because they're on Disney+. Plus. Damn you, Disney. You some pleb who only watches things on YouTube? You probably watch the ads, too. I do watch the ads. Because <laughs> I want to support content creators. Give Disney their money already. <laughs> they're you waiting for it? They're a poor indie company just trying to get by on their animation. Uncle Walt is spare, not eating nowadays. <clears throat> yes. Oh, jeez. <laughs> so, also, some entertainment news that happened. Yeah. Um, ladies and gentlemen... I gave Chiral a task earlier this week. And he, oh, did you? Yes. I didn't do it. You you fucking didn't do it? <laughs> no, what was I supposed to do? <laughs> we got news on the One Piece live action cast, and I told oh, Chiral... Oh, no, like hell I'm going to do that. <laughs> I told Chiral he's got 1,031 chapters to get up on so we can discuss this properly for the show, and I get the feeling he didn't do his homework. No, I didn't. Damn you, Chiral. Uh, yeah, live action One Piece cast. I'm really happy about this. I think they look really amazing. One Piece live action. Who do we got? All new people. Uh, none of these are famous actors. That makes sense. Yeah, and they're like that's a, a fine way of doing it. They're also like all our age, which is kind of surreal to me. Yeah. Facebook, you. What about Facebook? Um, I'm trying to pull up the link to see who it is, and it just keeps taking me to Facebook. It's just oh. gross. Ew. 
Yeah. I did. I said. I did throw them in the chat, like back on the ninth. Oh yeah, you did, didn't you? Yeah. And they're all Chris Pratt, by the way. Yes, every one of them. <laughs> um, a very interesting thing I do want to point out. Uh, Oda, the One Piece writer, has said all these characters are supposed to be of certain nationalities, and Netflix went out of their way to make sure they got a- an actor from every respective nationality of these characters properly. Mm-hmm. So, uh, good on Netflix for not whitewashing. Yeah. 10 out of 10. Do your damn jobs. Um, other than that, it's just casting news. Cowboy Bebop first impressions came out. Yeah, I feel like people... I'll take a hot take on this one. I think the people who want it to look exactly like the anime need to sit the fuck down and shut up. Yeah, I've been seeing nothing like, but, like okay, okay, if you're the kind of person who wants the story of the anime and the visuals of the anime, just watch the fucking anime. Yeah. Yeah. I, I get that some of the shots don't look how people would have expected them to, and I think there is some le- legitimate criticism that can be made as to the visual language that's being used in some cases, but the people who are nitpicking about like the color of the water being too Brown, just stop. It's a choice that somebody made. They clearly want this place to look dirtier for whatever like visual reason that they've decided get over it. It's not anything constructive to keep pointing it out. Yeah. Um, my, the what I've seen from this, right? Because I've done a lot of research into this, like just the first impressions. Mm-hmm. Um, there are pe- like from what I've gathered, just pulling this up using all my analytical data and analyzing tools, I've deduced this is not like the original anime, and in fact, <laughs> in some regards, it may be trying to be its own thing. Who could have imagined? As Who could have seen this coming? Hark, it might be a second Cowboy Bebop. Do Cowboys Bebop? Or must they be stopped? These cowboys. <laughs> anyway. Um, These I... Cowboys Beboppin'. <laughs> yeah. Did you see the like little shit post I wrote in the chat? <laughs> I did, yeah. Um, Either way... I don't expect it to really be the original series because one, it's mm-hmm. made what thirty years later. Yeah, Two... it's not gonna be well, more like more like twenty, but yeah, yeah, more like twenty years later. Two, <sighs> it is an entirely different medium. Yeah. Three, um, the it, the technology has changed dramatically, and audience expectations have mm-hmm. changed dramatically. Yep. Four. Do you really just want a um a verbatim like redo of the original that's like spread sh- out into longer I'm sure there are people who there are people who want that. Yes. They're wrong, but I guarantee they want it. The way I'm approaching this, right, is uh kind of like the MCU does when adapting Marvel comics. They're mm-hmm. not like perfect one to ones, but they got the spirit of the characters. Anybody oh, yeah. who freaks out about Cowboy Bebop not being uh <laughs> I'm speaking as if I've seen this, so please know I'm speaking on my ass in some extent. Um, anybody freaking out over the fact of an adaptation not being one to one, but praise something like Marvel, uh, Captain America: Civil War, for being a <laughs> yeah. good adaptation? Fuck off, because that is nothing like the adaptation. They, you know, yep. I mean the original comic. It's okay to change things, and you know. Yeah. You still got the anime. As long as you're still telling like approximately the same story, that that's the thing that matters. Yeah. Is that you're hitting the same story beats and he, however you need to adapt it to make it more in line with modern tastes is totally fine. Like that is one of the benefits of animation is that it does let you convey things in a different visual language and with those bright saturated colors that you can't do in real life because of how hard it is physically to get those. Yes. 
it's one of the things like, it's hard to tell with the cowboy bebop is it but it does look like a lot of it is being shot on real sets rather than just full green screens yeah and, and that's something that you you can't you know if you just want to animate the whole thing just just watch the anime yeah otherwise you're gonna have to deal with some of the physical limitations of the medium yeah I mean, these are also real people, too, so I'm sorry they can't fully right. extend their emotions like an uh, anime character would. Right. And One of the things that I saw is that uh, one of the clips that we have now is of the uh, uh, the church fight scene. Yeah. That's pretty iconic. And one of the criticisms I saw on it that does seem fair and legitimate is that uh, the, like, it's like it's super minor, though, but in the anime the angle the guy's holding the sword makes it very clear where the sword is pointing but mm. because it's a physical medium and it's a real sword uh and it's thin you know because swords are kind of skinny you can't really see the sword too well yeah so there is stuff like that that could have been done differently to make it more obvious what's going on but on the whole a lot of it seems like people looking for things to uh criticize well you know i know we've all been very uh burnt by anime adaptations Mm -hmm. Some of us more than others, it seems. Um, yep. And I just want to offer this critique of anime in general that kind of summarizes how I feel about adaptations of the anime genre. Mm -hmm. Anime is too idealized for its own goddamn good sometimes. Mm -hmm. And I think if you really try to suffocate yourself in that world of idealized anime... Uh, yep. You are going to fucking ruin yourself to an extent. Yeah. And, it's an impossible standard. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. Your your dragon maid waifu is never going to show up at your fucking house to heal you from <laughs> your depression. I'm sorry that the cute teenage girl that you liked in high school died of, didn't die of cancer before she told you you loved her and she loved you and uh, healed you from your depression. I am very sorry. You can't fucking Rasengan Goku into next week. Whenever you're angry and activate your demon energies, I'm very sorry. And now, and now we know why VTubers are so popular. Fuck yeah, dude. But when you have something so fantasized and idealized as anime, which in some respect, one of my least favorite things about anime is how much it panders to its audience. Um, mm -hmm. And you expect that kind of thing out of an adaptation, which is obviously under its own direction and you're very offended by that, I do have to ask you where your uh, boundaries in reality lie. Personally, I'm still very excited for uh, the Cowboy Bebop adaptation. Because it's an adaptation! Yeah. You know, that that is the point, is that it's not going to be one-to-one. -one. It, it shouldn't be one-to-one. -one. Yeah. And I think from what I've seen so far, it's not going to be perfect. But nothing is, and this looks faithful to the characters and the story and the plot and that is the important thing as far as i'm concerned you know what i will also give this it's had a lot more love in the marketing uh by netflix yeah. than all their other anime oh, adaptations. Yeah. well even compared to a lot of the disney stuff that we get even like the marvel stuff is very corporatized and yeah. made for a generic audience and the things that you've been seeing are made for fans of cowboy bebop yeah more than anything else. And no, I'm still looking forward to it. Yeah. I, I've just, after seeing the incredibly mixed reception, I do have to ask if like the expectations going in were definitely a part of what caused all this. I think so. Yeah. Well, I'd be curious. I, I haven't really looked into it that much. I've seen plenty of people's like initial reactions on Twitter. Yeah. I'd be curious how many of them are like content creator types. Um, that, yeah, go on. Have a vested interest in saying something more than it's fine. Yeah. Because it's fine doesn't get people attracted to your content. It has to be either the best thing ever or the worst thing ever, or people aren't going to click on your video for the most part. I will note that um, I, I, I have spent a lot of time looking at their opinions because I was very scared. Mm -hmm. Um. I've seen a lot of traditional journalists with reviews of it. And um, and this is something I just hate about the news cycle in general. Everybody has a hyperbolic opinion about this show. Yep. Which yep. scares me. What um, 
I will give the detractors, right? The detractors have one thing I've noted. Um, and this could just be a general, like, we just don't want to spoil anything. But detractors at least have cited certain things they do not like about it, which I can give them. Yep. But it's also... Yeah, there's definitely things that... There's there's definitely fair criticisms, for sure. Yeah. It, uh, what I appreciate is that they're able to cite the individual things they have problem with. Mm-hmm. Um, When it comes to, like, the people appraising it, they kind of just give the generic, you know, it's good. You know, here we are. We've got something that's actually worth a damn adapt- adaptation-wise. Um, yep. It broke the curse, which good on it um (laughs) but i do notice the hyperbole of like the negative side is always advertising the reviews uh the proper reviews which will come out on monday rather than the social embargo moments which i would be very curious to know how much uh i don't know what you call it what their contracts are because i know in the tech space in particular the way that they have the embargo set up is that they get like four or five different embargo dates for different things Mm -hmm. so it very well could be something in the contracts they signed for their ndas that this is the embargo date for you know first reviews and impressions but you can't actually say anything about these aspects of the story kind of thing yeah that's kind of what i've been getting like impressions Mm -hmm. on that um, the people who do have stuff to praise have been very vague about what they're praising. And I can't tell if that's just they're trying to shill or if they're uh, yeah. just under contract. So yep. I, I guess the big thing is going to be like tomorrow when the actual reviews come out. Yeah. Hopefully they're positive. I mean, yeah. I'm going to watch it either I, way. I, okay. no... I say that because I want it to be good. Yeah. You know. I, I, I plan on watching it day one because I'm not a fucking sheep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I don't care if the nostalgia critic says it's bad. <laughs> have you ever, have you, did you ever watch a uh, nostalgia critic? No, not, not particularly. Some stuff here and there, but not, not like out of, get one out of my way. Don't follow stuff. Gotcha. Just curious. Mm hmm. So I saw Dune yesterday. Go on. End the show with that, won't you? I feel like it is so overhyped. It looks really good, but it has the same problem in like a different way. So, I mean, okay. So this is, of course, the second film adaptation of Dune, right? Yep. We had the one in like the 80s, I think. And now this one is the second. And this one visually is much superior. The visual storytelling is spot on. And I think from like a, a visual appreciation standpoint, it holds up very well, sort of in the same way that like uh, a Mad Max Fury Road does. Okay. Where even though the story might not be perfect, the visuals can make up for that enough to keep it entertaining and fresh and enjoyable to watch. Hmm. Um, but this is part one of two of a book being adapted into a movie and a book that is not like particularly light, you know, it's some serious shit. And I feel like they haven't done the best job that they can to tell the story. To be frank, I feel like they're missing a bunch of exposition. I don't think I've ever had that experience before where you can like glint bits and pieces of like the broader story that's going on and sort of piece it together. But like, you have to really look for it and think about it while the movie is happening and like almost tone out during the action scenes to be like, okay, politically the fuck is going on. That makes sense here. Really? Yeah. Cause there's like five different distinct groups in this Dune universe that are all vying for power in their own way and keeping who they are separate, what their interests, as well as who is aligned with which group isn't an easy task in a two and a half hour movie with very little exposition to get you set up at the start. Hmm. But does it have the Marvel quips? No, it doesn't. Well, there's actually, there's one character that kind of does. Really? Not nearly to the extent of, like, Marvel. Um, but I will say uh, 
the character that does play by Jason Momoa was very entertaining to watch because of how much more lighthearted he was compared to the rest of the cast. It stood out in a good way, which is like what Marvel started to do, but then kind of just had to be everyone. Yeah. You know, the Iron Man quips were good because not everyone was doing them. It got to the point where once everyone doing them, they weren't really special anymore. They they all became Iron Man. Yeah. Um, the cast for this, though, yep. is very strong. I didn't really realize this because of how many, like, I don't even know what you call it, like, tier 1.5 actors there are, but all having them all sort of come together at once, it is a very, very strong collection. How strong? It works really well. Oh. This is a lot of people, like, all coming into their own, making the characters their own, and it fits with their deliveries and their styles. So, like, obviously, uh, Timothy Chalamet and Zendaya are the sort of, like, the leading face characters that have been in all the marketing, which mm-hmm. makes sense. They're, yeah. they're young and popular. And they both, you know, okay, I'll, I'll put it this way. Timothy Chalamet does a great job. Zendaya's only in it for about five minutes, so what? it's hard to tell. Yeah, right? <laughs> it's part one of two, and she only comes in at the very end of the film as, like, a, a person, as a role. Um so it's hard to tell how her actual acting is going to be, but, you know, like visually works fine. Um, but outside of that, you know, Rebecca Ferguson is established in her own right. Oscar Isaac. Uh, let me, I'll find you a picture of this because it was I was I didn't realize didn't click for me at first that it was Oscar Isaac and he kills it. He plays the Duke. What, did they have a name for him? Uh, Duke Atreides. Okay. I'll put it this way. He looks fucking hot. Oh, snap. Like, look at this. Look at this specimen. I still see the She-Hulk logo. Yeah, it's it's, it's loading. It's a big picture. Oh, okay. It's got to contain all the hotness. Oh, wow. Right? That does not look like Oscar Isaac. It doesn't, but it works. Unless you told me it was Oscar Isaac, I would have thought this was like a Kurt Russell stand-in. Right? Like, holy shit. <laughs> the man rocks Props a to beard. the man. He does. <laughs> like, you can see his friend there on the side just eyeballing him. He's like, damn, I wish I had that beard. Yeah. Yeah. That's why he's second in command. Yeah, it's based off the ferocity of beards. <laughs> Wow. Um, but like the rest of the cast, they all just killed it. Uh, yeah. Timothy Chalamet, Rex Ferguson, Oscar Isaac, Josh Brolin is the other one there. Uh, Stellan Skarsgård plays sort of like the villain guy. Very welcome change to what I'm used to, the roles I'm used to seeing him in. I think he did a great job. It was the kind of thing that I would expect to be sort of outside of his comfort zone as an actor. Mm-hmm. It's very uh, different from what it's expected of him, but it worked really, really well. Uh, Jason Momoa is kind of still doing Jason Momoa, but kind of contrary to that, for a lot of it, he doesn't have facial hair, and it also really works as, like, just a nice, like, oh, it's like, because it's a start, he has facial hair because he's, like, just coming back from some mission or something because he's a soldier in this, and it's like, oh, yeah, that's clearly Jason Momoa, but at a certain point, he shaves after he gets back, and it's just like, wait a minute, it's not Aquaman anymore, and that's kind of a good thing. It's not Aquaman anymore. Mm Mm-hmm. I I can't imagine Jason Momoa without a beard. Uh, let me find it because I was like it it, it was well, yeah you can go and look it up it was the kind of thing that was just like wait a minute that's Jason Momoa's character he doesn't have Whoa. a beard anymore. Jason Momoa doesn't have a beard right I expected a stronger chin on this man but wow right? it kind of works though there's a really good um so it, it for the character it works yeah as like showing the visual representation of you know like the clean cut soldier you know he gets back all gruff and grizzled but now that he's back he's cleaned up and himself again so it works i'm not sure um, which jason moa i like more like i feel like the aquaman jason moa is more visually striking and memorable it is kind of iconic like mm-hmm. jason moa aquaman uh, aquaman jason moa I would trust to save my life, but beardless yep. Jason Momoa, I would let date my daughter. <laughs> yes, that's a very good way of putting it. <laughs> um. Uh, yeah, keep going through it. Zendaya, 
isn't really in it that much. Uh, I think she'll probably do fine just because she's, you know, we've, we've seen her in other stuff and she's a good actor. But in this role, can't really tell yet. Uh, Dave Batista again, doesn't get, he's in it for the whole thing, but he, he doesn't get that much screen time. Um, and I kept getting, uh, oh shit, I can't remember his name now. The, uh, bad guy in Guardians 1. Uh, Ronan the Executioner. Yes. I kept getting Ronan vibes from his, his character because of the, uh, makeup and the armor and stuff they had. Not a bad way, but just in kind of like a, wait a minute, what movie am I watching? Kind of way. <laughs> nice. But it was fine. And then Javier Bardem. Again, it's Javier Bardem. Hard to go wrong. Yeah. So very nice. It was a uh, the problem that I have with it is that how much goes unsaid that you have to piece together yourself. Uh, and there's this thing that they do in it where apparently I am. So for the record, they don't say this. I am inferring this completely from the movie and based on like other media. They have these shield things that they loosely talk about how if they get struck at quickly, the shield will stop it. But if something slowly goes at them, it won't be stopped by the shield. So it stops fast things, right? Yeah. Which presumably has resulted because everybody has these shields has resulted in like uh, guns going out of purpose because they can stop these fast moving bullets relatively easily with these shields, but you can't do the same for a sword. Yeah. So that explains why there's so many uh, people using swords over firearms, even though firearms are shown to exist in the world still. But because they all have these shields on them that they're using to not only show that the shields are working, but then also visually show when someone's shield has been penetrated by the shield turning red, it makes it really hard to see a lot of the action scenes. Because where you would expect to get this choreographed hand-to-hand -hand combat, you're instead trying to look through these red and blue films that are surrounding the characters, obscuring that choreographed combat. Yeah. And there's a really cool, like, just a badass scene with Jason Momoa's character where he's, like, going toe-to-toe, hand-to-hand with a dozen people in a hallway... And you just can't see what the hell's going on because they've got all these shields popping up and down and turning blue and red all the time. And it felt like a big miss. Like they could have done it with a differently some way that would have made it much clearer visually. Well, well, well. Okay. Yeah. It's a totally fine movie. I, I don't know if I would especially like recommend it, but you know, it's, it's fine. Can I give my uh, one re word review? Because I've seen um, Red Notice yesterday. Mm. Go for it. My one word review of Red Notice. Bad. <laughs> is it is it that bad? I didn't finish it. There was a point okay. where I left the room to go use the bathroom and didn't like. I I was so disenchanted by the movie. I just left the TV oh, running. Right, it's Netflix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and um. When I came back, they, like earlier, the other earlier scene, they were uh, doing like a heist at a ball, some James Bond shit, right? Yep, yep. I come back and they're doing uh, Spanish bullfighting, and I realized <laughs> this was just not a movie made for me. Yeah. Anyway, with that little note, uh, is, are we good for the show? Yeah, I think we're good. There's a lot of entertainment stuff this week. Yeah. Disney, what the hell? <laughs> quarter quarter four finances, dude. Right. I'm Neef Miss Orion, and I've been a schmo. I'm Kyrell, and I've been a schmo. And this has been Disney Plus Day. I wait your Shreks.